All right, folks, I want to discuss all these discrepancies in this case file that we have from Oli Perry's murder back in 2011. There are several. Almost every detail, there's a counter detail. So I want to get into it. I think I know why there may be some of them, but then other ones, there's just no explaining it. So let's jump right on into it. Let me add this real quick. I am in no way, shape, or form pointing a finger at any one specific person. If anything, people that know me, I'm more the one that rules people out. But also, I'd like for everybody to remember whoever is guilty of this or that. This was a dozen years ago. These men are men now. They were kids then. And all the kids were doing the same dirt. It was just an ugly game they played. All right, first up, we have this one here that says, um, these are from the workers from the CTA. And pretty much they say that they're on the south side of 63rd and the west side of Martin Luther King Drive. But they also said, one of them had said that they heard somebody yell for the offenders to get in the car. So let's look here. I've got it slowed down and I'm going to zoom in. This is the south side of 63rd and the west side of Martin Luther King Drive. There's the truck and there's the vehicle. So that matches up. My concern is what they're claiming that they saw throughout the event. All right, we're going to just continue on with the CTA workers. Now, this one here, we can't see a date or anything really to know for sure. It just says that they interviewed somebody at the CTA red line. We shouldn't assume that that was a worker, but hey, I don't know what else to do. I don't think it really was a worker because it says that they identified the two offenders as being Barnes and Stewart, and they don't say that anywhere else. If I could at least see a date on it, I could, you know, figure out if it was Butta or Jay. But, again, none of the CTA workers uh, identified them by name, for one. And most of them didn't even, uh, was able to even pick them out of a lineup. So, that's why I'm saying it, I don't really think it's a CTA worker. Okay, here I want you to take note of the three CTA workers that we were talking about. Their age is uh, 44, 51, and 59. They were born in 51, 59, and 67. And I say that because on certain documents, we can only see either their age or their birth year. That's how I kind of put them together, who's saying what. But it says that they met with them again. And it says the first one said that he was with the second and third ones at the same time that he claimed earlier on the other interviews, he heard a loud bang that sounded like a gunshot. Now, this was the day after the incident. Well, actually about four and a half hours or so after the incident. But again, watch how the story changes. I don't know if it's the people or if it's the way the officer, different officers choose to write things in their little cliff notes. Now, on this page, it's the same workers. It, they say that they were south of 63rd and west of uh, King Drive. And they said, this one's also said that they saw muzzle flashes. But again, like I showed you earlier, did they really see it because of the angle that they were at? Uh, it says number, they saw number one and number two offenders running northbound on King from 6401 South King and hop into a newer model four-door Chevy Impala with chrome rims. Said the vehicle continued to flee the scene northbound on King. The second witness also stated that he observed the flashes of light which appeared to be gunshots. Um, it also says that uh, when he... the one of the, the second offender entered the vehicle, he 
he removed a black hoodie sweatshirt. Now we're changing colors. Okay, that's what I want y'all to keep up with. Now this is the one that's 51 years old, born in 1959. Said he was standing on the corner of 63rd and King when he saw the two males, uh, six foot or more. Then he says one had a white hoodie, the other a white t-shirt. And then he says that he could see the victim flipping around in the middle of the street. Then he continues on to say that they ran towards their direction and came within 20 feet and jumped into a gray-colored Malibu or Impala four-door with 20 or better rims that were chrome. Now, I'm a female and I know how close 20 feet is. And nobody came within 20 feet of any of those people down there on 63rd and King. But again, now we got a blue, a black, and a white hoodie. Now let me just take another look at where those CTA vehicles were that they were sitting in. You know, where they said that the offenders came within 20 feet of them. Now, I'm, there they are right there. I slow it way down so you can get a good idea because I'm sure you've seen this area enough with, with the camera going back and forth. But again, and unless there's just a whole bunch of silver cars with a whole bunch of 20-year-olds jumping in them, there is no way that the offenders got that close because for one, that little road on the left of those cars, that's a one way. And on the right, I'm sure, is, well, the right side is probably the two way, but it's got that little uh, one way where you can turn off and come over here to MLK Road. It's like, that's no way possible. Okay, so here we have the 44 year old that says the offenders were a six foot nine black cap, white shirt, dark pants, and a five foot 10 blue hoodie, dark shirt, and pants. And it says that um, he was in the same spot over there underneath the little viaduct thing. And let's see it. Okay, here we go. Again, you can see the three CTA workers where the star is. And this was done on the 11th. And again, it says that, okay, now this is where they were interviewed again. And I drew a line in between each one. It says the first one is a janitor. And he states again where he was at. He saw two black males running up from the area of the shooting. He uh, saw the silver four-door vehicle, possibly a Chevy Malibu or Impala. One of the males was five foot nine. The other one was five foot ten. They were not able to make an identification with the photo lineup. The next CTA janitor worker was on the corner of 63rd and King. So there was two black males, both over six feet tall, run towards Perry, shoot him multiple times, causing him to fall to the street. Both offenders fled towards them in order to enter the great Chevy Malibu or Impala. He was not shown a photo lineup. Then they re-interviewed the elevator repair man who said that he was sitting in the truck while his friend was standing outside the truck. And he heard multiple gunshots, somebody telling him to stay in the truck. He observed a silver colored car driving northbound on MLK and saw two black males jump into the car which fled northbound. Then the anonymous caller, they interviewed him again. 
He said the same thing again. He was on 64th and Vernon. And that he saw Perry laying in the street after hearing the gunshots, so he called for an ambulance. Now, on this page alone, these same people have all got the offenders running in different directions. Now, here we got the 44-year-old CTA worker. But in this statement, they say that the offenders, one was wearing a black cap with a white t-shirt and black pants, and the other offender was wearing a black hoodie. Now, I couldn't find any black hoodies, but there's five people right here that have black hats on with white t-shirts. One has a black and white hat mixed together. So that's a lot of choices. This person also claims that they saw the flashing, thinking it's from the gun. But I want to point this out right here. I kept thinking at first that I was seeing a gun shot flash, and it wasn't. It was this right here. So depending on where this person was standing at makes me wonder, were they seeing it the same way I was at first? Because obviously they don't have the footage to look at over and over again. Now, on this footage clip, I cannot say for certain that these two people that I'm going to point out are actual CTA workers, but what I can say is that they're standing on the corner of 63rd and King when they hear the shots and they pop out from around the cut there. I'll have red arrows pointing to them, and that way you can tell where they're at. One's going to pop out around this little corner first. There he is right there. And then the other one is standing back there. And then you can see a third one running from the back side there. Now I wanted to include this in here to show how fast rumors get started. On August the 28th, when they spoke to Odie's mother, she informed them that word on the street she had heard was that there was a male offender by the na nickname Main Main or May May. Now, I think we can all kind of guess who it is that she's referring to. But this is within, what, two weeks afterwards? I don't think, well, supposedly Odie's friend saw him, but I don't know if, how true that it really is. Okay, then on this statement, which is from a 20-year-old, they said that uh, they were, this is supposed to be Odie's friend. He was walking eastbound across King Drive to the Swisher Sweets store. He saw Ver Odie get on his bike, leave the parking lot, start riding northbound, and once in front of the shop in the parking lot, he hears the shots, okay? But he says the offender was wearing a white cap with black t-shirt, blue jeans, jogging eastbound on 64th, and then northbound on Eberhardt. Now, I can't find anybody in a black t-shirt with the white cap on. But, you know, who's to say they didn't switch out during the night? I don't know. It's hard to tell. Now, in this person's statement, we're going to be seeing another copy of it, and it's going to go more into detail. But basically, right there where the yellow signage is, that's where the Swisher Sweet Store was. Okay? So this is the parking lot, and then there's your auto zone. Now, on this one, they, this, the statement makes it sound like they were just kind of walking through and passing them, you know, as they were coming and going type of thing. In the other one, you'll read it goes into a little bit more detail, which makes it more complicated. But while I'm here, let me also point out that this is where the bus stop is on 64th and King, because that's going to come into play as part of his statement as well on the other state. Now, I'm just going to make a, an assumption right here, but here's the gate to get out of Oblock 
and then to come eastbound to go to the Swisher Sweet store would be going over here, okay? And he states also that he sees the offender running east down 64th, which, okay, you can see that pretty much from any view down there, but he's also going to say that he sees them running this way down to Ebhart, which is way down here where the other camera is. And then they see them go this way. So how is it that they could see them? I don't care even if they were standing They'd have to be standing right down here to be able to see that. So again, okay, now this is the other statement that was taken on a different day uh, in 2016. And it says that there was a female with a child at the bus stop on 64th and King and a male nearby faking like he was with the female and kids. As Oli rode Nearby, the male stepped back and began shooting. Odie fell and tried to get up. Shooter finished him off. The description matched BT, which is Boss Trail. Same as what was said at the scene. Then it says, thinks the second shooter doesn't recall where they came from, but they couldn't ID him. But he was pretty sure that he ID'd Boss Trail in a lineup. So again, the offender was at the bus stop on 64th and King when he started shooting. Okay? Well, at least that's according to this witness's statement. Now take note how little bit is actually written on this page. Because the next document we're going to look at is supposed to be this document but typed up. Now, with it typed up, it says that on October the 8th, 2016, they re-interviewed the same person, and he essentially stated the same things that he said in 2011. Those facts being that he was on Martin Luther King Drive near the scene of the shooting and that he had just seen Perry riding his bike. He added that he had actually seen more than he stated in 2011. He said that he watched Perry ride the bike northbound on MLK and then saw a black male standing near the bus stop along with a female and her child. Perry approached the black male. The black male stepped out and shot Perry, who fell from his bike. Then the offender approached and continued to shoot Perry before fleeing eastbound on 64th Street. He further stated that he thinks that there's a second offender also shooting but does not remember where the second offender would have came from. He also heard rumors that the second offender was a female, but he cannot remember where he heard that from. It was just word on the street. And, but he did agree to view the photo lineup and sign the initial it. And he identified Rodney Stewart as the shooter. And he was pretty sure that he would still need to see an see him in an actual lineup. And then it says, um, but with Jakira Barnes, he could not make the identification. Now, here's the thing. Rodney Stewart was already deceased at this point. So what kind of games are they playing? I mean, let's be for real here. No matter which one of Oli's friends it is that they're speaking to, all of Old Block knows that Boss Trail is deceased. He had been for, what, more than two years at this point? And they're going to ask to see him in a lineup? Or are they all just playing games? Your guess is as good as mine. And then there's the other alternative. Because as old as these guys have gotten, a lot of times they're still immature with their emotions. What you see here is in between the death of Odie and the death of K.I., Baldy 
D Thang, Patoon, Sheroid, White White, J Money, LA, Blood Money, and many, many more had all been murdered. So is Odie's friend just like, okay, well, since KI and then want to be false claiming bodies, let me just throw this on there too. Because again, like I said, his friends all knew that Boss Trail was deceased. Now, this is what the friends said on the first go around when they had him sitting in the squad car to be interviewed. He stated that he had walked in the Swisher Sweet store. The other one said that he walked past them in the parking lot. But on the very first one, it says he walked in the store as Odie was walking out of the store and saw Odie begin to ride his bike northbound on MLK. Then he heard some gunshots, and he turned and looked northbound in the direction of the gunshots and saw Perry fall from his bike, rising up from the ground and running northbound on MLK. Then he heard approximately 10 more shots and saw Perry fall back down to the ground. Then he saw a tall male black, approximately 18 to 22, 6 to 6 foot 3, dark complexion, dreadlocks. He stated that he knew this was the offender because the individual was jogging away from the area where the shots came from. The offender fled eastbound on 64th. Now, we got him going to the right and we got him going to the north. Or should I say to the east and to the north? And you would think that Odie's friends would be the one to tell the truth the most, even if they do have their little no snitching. I mean, if you're going to talk to the cops, at least go ahead and tell them what's, what's the real truth if that's your friend and you care about them. But at the same time, how do we got the offenders going east and going north at the same time? We got them jumping in a vehicle and we got them running on foot at the same time. Or maybe, maybe there was more to it, which is my gut feeling. Now here on August the 11th at 4.17 in the morning, they spoke with someone that said that there was two unknown uh, offenders. They, the cops observed Oli laying face down in the street Street, in the middle of the street. He was covered in blood, appeared to have gunshots. They called EMS and gave out the information on the offenders, which was just two black guys and wearing dark clothes. Uh, witnesses stated that they fled eastbound on 64th on foot. So again, we're pretty much split down the middle, 50-50. Which way did they go? Which way did they go? This is the anonymous caller that also called 911 for the ambulance. He states that he was down on the corner of 64th and Vernon and that he could see that Odie was laying in the street hurt and he heard the shots, of course. So let me show you where 64th and Vernon is. This is the corner right here which is one block behind or east of AutoZone, where that incident actually took place at. So yeah, I think he could actually see that there was somebody laying in the street, and, you know, if he wasn't drinking or anything, um, and I'm sure he heard the shots. Now we're going to get into the friend friend. So in July of 2016 and August of 2016, they re-interviewed Butta and Jay. This was, I believe, like the third time at this point. Now, they said that they were friends of Stuart and Barnes, that they were all members of the Jaro City Fraction, the Gangster's Disciples, um, that they had had conversations with Stuart and Barnes, that they had both said and admitted that they were the ones that killed Perry. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, they're repeating themselves, basically. 
but they didn't have any specifics because it had been five years. And basically, they were just trying to get a lighter sentence for their own troubles because they were being held on murder at the time. Now, I don't know if that number five means this is the fifth time we done spoke to them, but here we go. It says that they were with Duck and Dome shooting a video on Tuka Day on 62nd and Rhodes. Boss Trail and Jagera Barnes are the shooter's offenders. Boss Trail was a shooter. Jay heard the shots uh, while shooting the video. And later, Boss Trail and Barnes admitted that they were the ones that killed him. Now, how do I know that it was Jay that said it? If you look at the bottom red arrow, this is from 2021. Jay was still locked up in 2021, but I wasn't. But now I have to admit, this one got my attention because it says the same thing, you know, Boss Trail, Jakira. But if you drop down to the middle, it says that it was because, after it says that they were both deceased, it says, Odie Perry pistol whipped blank. Then it says they still have, they have a scar to prove it. Then it says, celebrating Tuka Day, uh, Shondell Gregory, Odie Perry may have killed him. Then it says um, that they saw Odie Perry on the bicycle, sees a fender, and says, blow if you're gonna. And so Boss Trail does, according to this statement. So who got pistol whipped? And why is this person the only one that heard Odie Perry say this? Or is it just Cap? All right, and before I show this last part, I want you to take another look at this vehicle because you see it's almost at 63rd. Now, this part here, I did not cut it or merge it together. This is how CPD gave it to me. Now watch that intersection. Keep watching it. Does that not look like the same car just came back again? And it did not have time to spin the block. Now in this next little 15 second clip, I got to shout Brew Crew out because he hit me up this morning and pointed this out to me and I was able to catch it. Let me show it to you. And I'm going to play it back to back. But this is actually during FBG Duck's freestyle video in the background. There's another point that it, the car passes by as well, but it's even shorter. And just to get these 15 seconds that I got, I really had to slow it way down multiples of times. But again, just to let you see that. Now let's take a look at the other thing. Okay, now let me show you this real quick before we get into the last clip. That crossroads right in the middle there, to the right of where it says butter, that's where this camera is that we're going to be watching the footage from. So straight up, where it says Odie Perry was killed, that's MLK. And then to the direct right is taking you towards 63rd Street. All right, let me point some things out for y'all. You look at the top of the screen, that's Wabash. Where, that's where Odie Perry's last known address is at. Down here on the bottom right, you see it says Carl Spencer was killed here. And that was just the month before Odie was killed. Then we come south a little bit, you see Del Fisher lived right here. Little B was killed right there. Uh, Boss Trail was killed down here at the bottom. Modell was killed two street, uh, one street up, I'm sorry. And you got 
third dividing two of, or the, the four of those, two and two. Then you go a little bit this way, and you can see where FBG Butter lives, and you know it was right next door to the right. The way that we're facing is where uh, KI was killed. Uh, L, uh, little B lived right there, one block behind him, and then a block over from where Little B actually lived is where Front Street J Money was killed. So what I'm saying is taking an overall look at the map as to which way people were running, which way people were driving, it makes a little bit more sense why Odie was going back and forth. Don't get me wrong. I think Odie knew that they were recording the music video. He was probably riding his bike back and forth right on the edge of their blocks, irritating them, because in that video, you keep seeing how they'll all turn in the same direction looking down the road. But at the same time, I think, in between the two video shoots and maybe after the last video shoot, I think that they were all trolling the neighborhood up to O Block because they knew Odie was out riding his bike. And I'll go as far as to say, if anything, that they were all hoping for the crime of opportunity to take place. It just so happened the ones that got them got them. I think that they were all ready. I don't think it was like, oh, you're the one that's going to do it type of thing. But that's just my opinion. And who am I? All right. And the same shout out goes for this right here. I'm going to show this little clip in real time. And then I'll play it again and slow it down even more. Well, it's not in real time. I did slow this one down, but I will slow it back down again and zoom in. Because some folks are feeling like if you look through the windshield of this vehicle that you see an orange polo shirt. Now, I'll be honest, with this grainy, leafy footage, you're not going to see a person. All you're going to see is color. To me, it's a cross between the orange and the reddish, but it's definitely something. But you see, when I slow it down and I zoom in, how the whole color of the car and everything kind of gets distorted. But, again, now what I did with the footage this time with this camera is I cut out all the dead time spaces. I mean, what I mean by that is, with other cases... <laughs> And I'm going to say this, and, and my day oneers know what I'm laughing about. With other cases, looking at footage, we've gotten some excellent footage, and people in our communities will make it look like what we're looking at right now and say, do you see the killer? And so that's why I'm laughing, whereas this was given to us this way. So, yeah, I've kind of learned to look at it like this and see things. But what I did was any time a vehicle enters the view of the camera, or a person enters the view of the camera. I kept that in there. That way, it doesn't drag out so long with the, the dead air time type thing. And it is still in the same chronological order. Now, I will say this. I figured out how to sync the two camera footages together. And I will be putting that together for y'all. Now, it's going to overlap as far as this one's going to start way ahead of time in recording than the other one. But then again, that other one is so fast forwarded. By the time I put it down to normal speed, it'll probably have a lot afterwards than this one. But we'll see. But I found the spot where I can sync them together. So that ought to be interesting to be able to watch it that way instead of just guessing at what's going on. Now, this girl right here, if K.I. would have had her hair flat ironed that day and, and put on some little nice clothes, that could have been her. But she ain't got time to do her hair to make it lay down like that. So I know that ain't her. So don't go start no rumors. Not on my account, please.
But I'll let you guys watch this out. It's got about, uh, let me see, maybe 15 minutes. But like I said, if you'll notice, uh, what I want you to keep in mind, should I say, is we can't see MLK and we can't see 63rd. But what we can see is like when the cops are coming or when people's coming down 64th towards the camera. Because remember, they said they took off running down 64th. There's a lot of people that's going to come running from MLK this way, but then there's a lot of people that's going to be running towards it as well. So this can be very interesting having that information straight in your mind now. So let me find y'all something to listen to while I let this play. 